All right, I'm Ann Blessing. It's February 17, 2022, and I'm interviewing Hayward Carter at 43 East Bay Street. Um, Hayward, will you say your full name and spell it? Thomas Hayward Carter, Jr. Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, Hayward, H-E-Y-W-A-R-D, Carter, Jr. Okay, and can you tell us about when and where you were born and then about your parents and siblings? Yeah, I was born at Roper Hospital in Charleston on June 9, 1946. Uh, my sibling, I've got two sisters, one about five years older and one about five years younger. The older one is uh, Grayson Carter Jackson, lives up near Camden now. And the younger one is Margaret Hartley Carter, known as Meta, M-E-T-A, um, who lives on my parents' prop, what I call my parents' property, or what we call the big house. And tell us about your parents. My um, mother and father were Thomas Hayward Carter and uh, Grace Hanahan Carter. My father grew up in Savannah, one of uh, six children. His father died, when, excuse me, one of seven children. His father died when he was six. He was born in, I think, 1905. And um, that, near to the end of the Civil War, the South was still pretty devastated. Savannah was very poor. His family, with his father having died young, and his mother left with seven children. One was born after, after my father's father died. Um, pretty much had no money. He had to, to, to leave high school in the 10th grade just to help get a job and help feed the family. He came to Charleston to look for a, a better job, a better life, and when he was about 20 or 21. Um, my mother was born and raised in Charleston uh, on 21 Meeting Street. Uh, her parents were James Ross Hanahan, who was a, a businessman, and um, Mariah Grayson Ogier, uh, who was the... Um, I think the Ogier is the last name have died out in Charleston now, uh, but her father and grandfather were both doctors in Charleston. And can you talk about your mother's childhood and what that was like? Well, I wasn't around then, but uh, <clears throat> from what she's told me, I mean, everybody's childhood in retrospect is pretty idyllic, but I think hers was, as I said, they lived at 21 Meeting Street. Um, the only, one of the only recollections I have from what she told me is that she had a great large Russian wolfhound. And <clears throat> I don't know whether you know the, the, the house or not, it's on the corner of Little Lamble in Meeting, but it's, the grounds and the house itself are raised up about one floor. Um, and she used to, it's got a little parapet going along Meeting Street, she used to to hide with the greyhound uh, behind that parapet when somebody would come along the sidewalk. She and the greyhound would would pop up and scare them as badly as they could, and they'd run down the street the way she told it. But I think it was a, as my father said, it was a, it was a, the 30s, and they got married sometime in the 30s, for a good time to be in Charleston because it was the old too poor to paint, too proud to whitewash. Um, nothing much had been fixed up, but it was, I wish I had seen Charleston in the 30s. It was apparently a very picturesque, very natural place. And how did your parents meet? I really don't know. I'm not sure. I think they were just sort of part of the same social crowd. My father, um, in his bachelor days, rented a um, carriage house, I think on Church Street, um, with his good friend, Eddie Pritchard, who was later a very well-known lawyer in Charleston. And um, for a while, my father worked at the Fort Sumter Hotel on the Battery. And um, he and his friends had a place that they rented on Folly Beach. You could have bought Folly Beach for $10,000 back then, um, that they call the Hangover Club. So they'd spend weekends and have parties out there. And I think they were just part of the same same social crowd. Mm -hmm. And where did you grow up? In 
what houses around Charleston you lived in? Well, I grew up in the country, um, pretty much where I, I, I am now. My parents, <clears throat> my grandfather, Ross Hanahan, um, had about 5,700 acres between Middleton and Magnolia Gardens. And he had given each of his three children, including your grandfather, I guess, 50 acres on the river. Um, and my, um, the 50 acres that my grandparents gave my mother, they built a house. Um, first as a one-story house in the 30s, and then after my father came back from World War II as a um, large three-story brick house. And I grew up there. Um, till I ran away to school. And what was it like? Where where would you go to school? How would you get into town? How long would you come in? I, I went to Charleston Day School. Um, my two sisters and I all went to Charleston Day School. Um, it was on Elliott Street then. Miss Tenney and Miss Stewart were still running the place. Um, and I think probably of all the schools I've been to, I got the best foundation for an education at Charleston Day School. Really a good school back then. Very small. I think in my graduating class of 1960, there were eight or ten students. Um, went to Charleston Day School, went to Goud School for one year in the ninth grade after I graduated from Charleston Day. Goud School at that time was on the corner of East Bay and I think it's South Edges Wharf, maybe the extension of Elliott Street, of, um, yeah, Elliott. It was in the ninth grade classroom. They hadn't gotten to the 12th grade yet. 10th grade was the highest grade. The ninth and 10th grade classrooms were over Viles Feed Store. You'd have to walk up the building on the corner of the, of the, of the street, walk on a catwalk in the open, over Viles Feed Store and into the classroom. Um, but it was a good school. Berkeley Grim Grimble ran it and he did a very good job. And then I went off to Episcopal High School for three years. And then after Episcopal, I went to Davidson College in North Carolina for four years. And then I went to University of Virginia Law School in Charlottesville for three years and came back. Well, after the University of Virginia, Alan and I went, lived in the Middle East for about a year and a half worked for a newspaper in Iran, and then um, came back to Charleston. I went to work with Young Clement Rivers, a law firm on Broad Street that still exists. And after about five years, went to the University of Florida gra graduate tax program to get a tax degree, came back, started practicing law in Charleston again. Um, can you go back to your father in World War II and tell about his service there? Yeah, he, i um, not sure exactly when he went overseas. He was a captain in the Engineering Corps. Why he was in the Engineering Corps, I have no idea, because um, I say he never even graduated from college. But he, um, he wasn't in combat. He spent a, he spent, landed first in North Africa, and then spent a year in uh, Palermo, Sicily, and another year in Marseille, France. Um, and came back in, I think, late in 45. And I said I was born in 46. So I'm, I'm on, on the crest of the baby boomers, and now the ebb of the baby boomers is taking place. Um, and then as far as you're coming in for Charleston Day and the Gowd School, how would you get to school? How long did it take, and what was the, the route like? Well, we came up Highway 61, as we do now, um, and it took, I don't know, probably about 20, 25 minutes, because I think there was one stoplight between our house, between, which is between Middleton and Magdalia Gardens and um, the peninsula. And we, the memories I have are carpooling with the, with the Hasties, Norwood Hastie and his family um, and their two children, Eleanor and young Norwood. Um, so we'd carpool with them. Uh, I don't think they went to Charleston Day School. I'm, I'm not sure. But um, and when the carpool wasn't available, I think our mother would, would bring us in. As I recall, school laid out for me 
generally about two o'clock, and often I'd walk around to my grandparents at 21 Meeting Street and have lunch with them, which was two o'clock lunch in Charleston, big meal in the middle of the day, so typical for that time. So we're interested in, in capturing what downtown Charleston was like in your childhood. So um, can you talk about some of the places where you shopped or, or went to the, see doctors or socialized? You know, in effect, I didn't grow up in downtown Charleston because I lived in the country. I mean, I went to I went to grade school um, in one year of high school in downtown Charleston. All my friends were in downtown Charleston, um, and at that time, and I'm talking about years, ages ten to I mean years, maybe fifty six to to sixty four. Um, you could walk down the street of most streets south of Broad Street and know who lived in just about every house because the families had lived there for a long time. Um, very different from the current situation, not saying it's better, but it was a very comfortable feeling. Uh, in, in downtown Charleston, when I talk about downtown Charleston, I talk about, I'm, I'm thinking south of Broad Street was a much less homogenous place than it is now. I mean, there were a couple of grocery stores I can remember, um, some warehouses, some of it, particularly in the Market Street area, um, was very run down and still very maritime oriented. I mean, big ships would, big commercial ships would dock downtown um, and sailors would be around and, um, the Market Street area was a pretty rough area back then, uh, but my you know my memories again like everybody's memories of their child most people's of their childhood were very pleasant, um, and again I spent a lot of time in the country and have would have friends out there on on the weekend. Where did your family shop for groceries and other things? You know I paid no no attention whatsoever to that kind of thing. Um, I do remember there was a colonial grocery store on right behind King Street on Bufane Street, which seemed to be the, the place to go. Um, and I think there may have been a, a small grocery store on St. Andrew's Boulevard. Um, which was a sort of a, a low-level commercial area back then. There was an abattoir. Um, there was a kind of a nightclub called Uncle Bunny's. Um, but shopping wasn't my big thing at that time. Still, <laughs> about, still is how not. Get Crutch X, uh, and I was a chubby kid to put it mildly. There was a place up on Upper. Upper King Street called the Father Son Store, and we go in. The, I'd go in there with my father and buy um, the um, the chubby or the big outfits and the big big mattress mattress jackets with big swatches and that, that kind of thing was in back then. And again, I'm talking about late fifties and early sixties. Um, and so, um, as far as driving in. To town, what were the cars that you remember from your childhood? Station wagons. My mother always had station wagons, and they were the woodies, um, the real woodies with real wood. She had, I remember, <clears throat> usually they'd have stenciled on the side Millbrook Plantation. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the memories I have involving cars was often when she, if she'd pick us up after school, She'd go by the post office for the springtime, or any time the, the flower ladies had flowers. She'd buy some flowers to take home, and did it pretty often. And, and I remember the flower ladies calling her Miss Millbrook, because that was what was on the car. That was the name they knew. Well, this may be family lore, but I was always told that the overpass over the train tracks on Highway 61 was built because your mother raced the train. Um, <laughs> Do you know anything about that? Uh, uh, it may or may not be true. I never heard that before, but I wouldn't be surprised. Right. 
if that were if that were the case. Um, and when you mentioned the stoplight earlier, was that the one stoplight between Millbrook and, and uh, the bridge? Was that at Sam Rittenberg, or where where was the stoplight? I don't actually. I don't remember where it was, but my impression is they were. You know, there may be 15 now um, that there were no more than one then. There wasn't any traffic on 61 then. What about um, going to movies and plays and things like that growing up? Well, it was a Dock Street Theater. I mean, there's always been the Dock Street Theater. That was where live performances were. Um, no Gilliard Performing Arts Center, of course. The movie houses were... There were a couple of them on Upper King Street. I'm talking about on beyond Calhoun Street. Um, the the Lincoln, um, which is the the African American Theater, and the American. Um, and the American Theater is still there. I think the Patricks own it and have events there. And then downtown, there was the the Gloria coming down King Street from Calhoun. I think this is the right order. The Gloria, the Garden in the Riviera, uh, and the Riviera is still there as an event right across from Charleston Place as an event venue. Uh, and I remember walking with my friends, say, to, to the garden of the, of the Gloria Theater, um, walking back in the evenings in the, in the summertime or in the late springtime and seeing who could step on the most cockroaches on the way back. Uh, and it was also on Liberty Street, which is that little short street between what Archdale and King are. Um, there was the Liberty Theater. Can you remember specific films that you saw? You know, it would have been, well, I don't know, this may have been too far back, but cowboy movies, um, cartoons, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Nothing very highbrow, I assure you. Yeah, occasionally. I mean, there, there were very few, um, very few restaurants in Charleston, particularly in downtown Charleston, because everybody ate at home. Uh, most people had cooks, uh, and the big meal was, by that time, was um, later in the was in the evening. But the the two that were most known there was Perdita's, which was on I think Exchange Street. Um, which for a, a time was the restaurant in Charleston. Um, it sort of de deteriorated in quality before it closed. Um, but Perdita was, was the place to go when you had out-of-town guests and that sort of thing. Um, and there was a place on Highway 17 South called Cavalero's, which is now a car dealership, um, which was sort of steak and uh, dancing on weekends and that sort of thing. But those are the only two places I remember, other than further down on 17, Boodle's Barbecue, um, which has been gone for a long time. And um, if you were sick as a child, what doctors did you go to, or did you have to visit the hospital? I went to Dr. Rett, as I recall, um, who I think office was on Rutledge Avenue. Uh, it was on the the basement floor, and it was, Dr. Rat was an imposing figure, he had a mustache, very old fashioned, had a mustache, um, his office in the basement, I always looked at it as sort of a chamber of horrors, uh, but I think he's a very good, good doctor, but that's who I recall going to at, at, at a young age. I remember one time, <clears throat> I had broken my arm, my mother took me to Dr. Rat, and it was a, it was a, what do they call it, a twig fracture? It wasn't, all, it wasn't a clean fracture. So I was sitting on the table, and Dr. Rat says, well, we need to do something to this. Um, you don't want to go to the hospital, spend the night in the hospital, do you? I said, oh, no, sir. So he took my arm and went crack, crack, put it back in place, and that was that. You know, it hurt like hell for about two seconds, and it was all over. Um, what hurricanes and, and fires and major disasters do you remember? Well, <clears throat> no fires or other major disasters, no earthquakes, but I do remember Hurricane Gracie in the 50s, 
56 maybe, I'm not sure. And then, of course, Hazel later. Um, Gracie was a pretty terrible storm. It, it, um, it, it, it strewed trees down on Highway 61, the Ashley River Road, which wasn't opened up for more than a week. My father, maybe the, the next day after Gracie had passed by, my father walked to Pierpont, got up some sort of ride from Pierpont into town to the marina, um, rented a boat, came up on the Ashley River to take us, to get us and take us into town. And we lived with my grandparents on Meeting Street for a week or 10 days before things were opened back up. And then in Gracie, sort of a similar situation, not quite. The, <clears throat> my family and I happened to be at a, at a legal meeting in Asheville when Gracie came through. Excuse me, Hazel, um, not Gracie. When Hazel came through, and my son and I uh, drove back to Charleston. He was 14 at the time, older son. Went to the airport and hitched a ride on a Bell South helicopter um, that was headed for Isle of Palms to take us to our house on the river, led us down in the horse pasture, and then took off again. And um, we lived there f without electricity or anything else for about a week and trying to clear things out. And the trees were so thick on the road and on our property that it's probably for about a house on the river, 300 yards to the, to the highway. I got lost going to the highway because the trees were down so thick I, you couldn't tell where you were. Um, so those are the two disasters um, that I can remember, two hurricanes, two bad hurricanes. Can you talk about um, going to the beach and the mountains?